Good morning, everyone. My name is Ziad Khan. I'm with CPAC Dot Fund. We are a private equity firm which builds ventures for housing, community development. We're here to help home buyers with home buying process, very very confusing, and professionals, real estate professionals, to help them help their clients. Today we are going to talk about uh, different options for home buying. Not all uh, buyers are uh, have uh, great credit and they're not in, in a ideal condition. Something or another is lacking in there, some un unfortunate incident, something happened in their life which put them behind. They have been responsible, they've been uh, taking care of their commitments in, in life, but something happens like divorce, like bankruptcy, like some other thing, business didn't work out, they got laid off or something happened which prevents them from buying a house because lenders do not see them as an ideal candidate. So what are the options for those buyers? Uh, rent to own, rent to buy, this option is available uh, for those kind of people. And there are certain caveats, there are certain condition, there are certain um, situations that they must deal with or they come up with to uh, or rent a property that they can own. We will be talking today with Kelly Clayton. Kelly has more than 30 years of experience in all facets of real estate. She's a very, very helping professional. You can approach her anytime, regardless of whether you're bus doing business with uh, us, with her, or with one of our companies. Uh, she's always available. We are always available to help out in, in any case. We also have Argeria. Argeria is an, an attorney and she works with us closely in the title uh, and closing business. And if you have watched some of our previous episodes, Argeria has been in the market for buying a house. And we have also discussed rent to own option for her as well. And she has some questions which we're going to talk about. So I welcome you all. Thank you for joining, taking time to be with us. Kelly, why don't you uh, enlighten us? Give us a brief about Rent to Own program and then we will start with the questions. And in the meantime, I encourage all of you, if you have any comments or questions, please send it to us and one of our uh, facilitators will take a look at this and the experts will be happy to answer that. Thank you, Dr. Khan. Such a pleasure to be here today to talk about the topic of rent to own. This product is available in the market, even though many people do not even know about it. A lot of people desire to be homeowners because homeownership is one of the first steps to wealth building and stability, stability for their family, their children, if they have children or, or just themselves to be able to have ownership of an asset that is appreciating is very important for a lot of people, but they just don't feel like it's obtainable. Most people will go and to buy a house, they'll get with the realtor, the realtor will refer them to a mortgage professional, the mortgage professional will start the pre-qualification phase and something can come up that stops them dead in their tracks and then they get discouraged but there are options available okay so tell us how this uh, rent to own program works what is it and how does it work okay with the rent to own program uh, the potential home buyer will find a uh, seller or an interested party that's willing to sell mm -hmm. the home to them on a, on a rent to buy contract, which means they go into contract with this person or the seller, this, you know, uh, entity, and they determine the terms up front. I'm going to buy this house. This is the sales price. Uh, this is how much I'm going to put in down payment. This is how long I have before I have to go from being renting to buy in. So all the terms are there. They can move into the property and actually feel like, you know, this is my house. I'm working towards uh, finalizing the deal. That's, that's very interesting. So anybody who's renting a house now can work towards rent to own. 
So why would they continue renting? Why will they not get into a rent to own contract in this? How do they find those opportunities or those people who are open to rent to own, you know, the sellers? Okay, as a company that works with rent to own buyers, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone that may have been turned down by a mortgage company because of their credit. The credit just doesn't meet the current criteria to uh, be able to qualify for a house. Or I'm looking for someone uh, that has doesn't have the enough money to meet the, the demands of the mortgage pre-qualification. And so what happens, they, they come to, I can only talk for you know myself at this point, but they come to us and they say, you know, I really want to buy a house. Uh, this is what the mortgage company is saying. And so we do the old fashioned, look at their credit, look at their ability to repay the debt and look at how much money they have and work together to come up with a plan that everyone can agree on. So that's, that's very interesting from seller's point of view if uh, or uh, uh, homeowner's point of view they're renting a house which means they're getting the the uh, a certain amount every month why would they open to a, a proposition like uh, you know rent to own or rent to buy they can continue renting to uh, different people well, if you're looking from a seller standpoint, it's an opportunity to, for them to find a buyer that's vested in that house. You know, tenants know that it's not their house and they don't take the care for the property. I mean, I'm not saying all tenants, uh, many do, but when it's a rent to own, that person comes in and they feel vested in that property. They want to care for it uh, because they know that it's going to be theirs. They want it to build equity. They want it. They, they want their lawn to, to look beautiful. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why sellers would want to be involved. A, a buyer would want to be involved as well for the very same reasons. You know, on a rent to own program, it, it opens doors of opportunity where you feel like that's your home. So, yeah, so I understand that there is a lot of uh, marketing and uh, listing activity on internet so people can go and generically look, you know, pretty much anywhere for uh, this kind of an opportunity. Are there any specific places or does a real estate professional get involved into this kind of activity? Where do the buyers or the uh, renters should look for such opportunities? For this opportunity as a buyer, can be a little bit difficult because there's not a, you know like there's realtors selling real estate and there's you know uh, realtors looking for buyers to buy real estate there's not a lot of um, online engines for people wanting to rent to own you know it, it, it is harder to find you have to find you have to really look for those properties number one number two i would like to say that there are some um, scams out there so potential rent to own buyers will need to be where in the market you know in America the uh, fraud schemes have has increased a thousand percent so looking for someone that offers this rent to own program and has integrity someone that's trustworthy someone that you can check to make sure that they are legitimate sources of this is the first thing I would like to caution the buyer. On the seller side, if you're considering this rent to own program, what a mortgage underwriter would look for um, for a, a home buyer, a potential home buyer, is their previous rental history. So the buyers, and one of the first things that we're going to look for when we offer the rent to own or the rent to buy program is we're going to look, not necessarily do they have an exactly a perfect credit history in the last 12 months. They could have been late on their consumer debt. They could have had a late car payment. Um, we're, we're looking for how did they pay their rent in the last 12 to 24 months? Did they pay it on time? If they didn't pay it, on time what were the circumstances that caused them to get behind on that and the consumer you know there's there's been a lot of unusual activity in our world the past three years with covid and 
and and a, a lot of illnesses and sicknesses and job coming and going. So we're going to look at the person as a whole and ask them, you know, what caused this. We're going to not use a computerized module to say yes, you can buy a house or no. We're going to use common sense underwriting mechanisms by humans because we are we want to do more than just put them in a rent to buy program we want to help them achieve home ownership so common sense uh, underwriting process does that even exist it does exist yes uh, our mortgage company does have some common sense underwriting uh, not necessarily targeting first time home buyers but I've been in the mortgage industry for over 30 years and I understand that when I first came into the industry they didn't have scoring modules like they do today. We were taught how to look at the character of the file and determine the creditworthiness of the person. The scoring modules came in in the 90s, but prior to that everybody was looked at as an individual and with their, you know, identity. So essentially what you're saying is regardless of what may have happened recently to you know uh, upset their credit score or their financial profile you look over uh, a period of time to see if they have been responsible enough and they take their commitment seriously Absolutely we're looking at, at, at uh, another great um, option is you know tax seasons right around the corner a lot of times people will get these huge refunds and they'll go buy big screen TVs or upgrade their car or many of them will even buy electronic devices for their children but if they take all of those things depreciate and become less valuable whereas if they take their funds and they say you know what I want to own a home I'm going to look for a house to buy they can use it for down payment options on on their home to help their payment or they can go into a rent to buy um, agreement and come to the conclusion on the price of the house and also use those funds as their deposit or down payment right then and there so I, I also advise uh, home buyers to start planning as soon as uh, they can, but at least six months ahead of it. So this rent to own program gives them time to put their you know finances, get their plans together, and put their finances and get in a better shape. You know, save some or arrange some down payment money and all that. So typically, a renter needs a month's rent for security deposit and a month's rent for advance. When they are in a rent to buy situation, how much money uh, they should you know, consider bringing? Dr. Khan, it all depends on the seller of the property and what their requirements are and who they're working with to help them uh, enter into the contractual agreement. All of these things can be negotiated. I, I would like to say one thing, um, you know, of all these years of uh, working with potential home buyers and people getting pre-qualified for mortgages, many, many people will come and say, I want to buy a house and there are no rent to own programs available. It's just simply not obtainable. We want to change that for many people. And this is what I say to them. If you don't start today, you know, if you come and you've had credit issues or job problems or, you know, raising the capital to get in a home and you meet with someone that says, we can help you do this. I always say this, it took you a long time to get your credit in that position. It's not going to turn around overnight. You have to start planning planning to pay off some of your consumer. A rent to own program is to help people get the start into it, but they still have to have a plan. They have to say, okay, you know, I right now, I, um, I've got consumer lates, but I'm planning on paying my uh, credit cards first, working on installment debts later, I'll be able to debt qualify for this house in two to three years, maybe one and a half to two years. And we're gonna plan with them. And if they want to fulfill that contract and own the home, they're going to have to follow their plan. They're going to have to be committed 
to their plan to go from the rent to own program to the day they get the keys in their hand. But everything starts with a starting point and a plan. Okay, very good. It, it all sounds interesting, but uh, let me uh, help us understand the process. Let me lay it down and tell me if I'm missing anything. So it all starts like all home uh, selling process. The seller decides that they want to sell a house and they advertise uh, in places or they engage a real estate professional who helps them market that and an and interested buyer whose uh, credentials are not really uh, qualifiable for a, a traditional mortgage, they approach them and then they negotiate whatever terms they negotiate and then they uh, make a deal, they get into contract and the, the uh, prospective buyer moves into uh, the house as a renter and at some future date which is mutually agreed upon, they decide to close the deal. Is that how it works or am I missing something? No, you're absolutely right. The positive point to that is sales price is usually determined at, at the time of signing. So you're not out there competing with all of these other home buyers when your credit and, and ability to close is there. You, you're already past that. You've already picked your house. You already know that. So that is complete. The second thing is the contract usually specifies the term that you have to uh, to close on the house. It could be 18 months, one in a year, two years, some three years, but you do have to set your plan to meet that qualification. Okay, um, it's very interesting and I have many other questions, but I want to bring Argeria into this and I want to see if this is, Argeria, is this an interesting proposition for you as a you know, person who's looking to buy a house and uh, do you see any merits in this for your situation and do you have any questions? It does look like an interesting situation. Looks like a good opportunity. It allows me to try out the house to see if I like it. Um, also would allow me to clean up my credit if I need to clean up my credit and start to use my rent as equity towards purchase of a home. Um, but I had, do have a couple of questions. Who's responsible for the repairs and the taxes usually in home buy and uh, rent to own? Kelly. Yes, sir. Um, when you're doing a rent to own, you are actually, you're paying your rent. A small portion of that is, or a portion defined in the contract is going towards your down payment on the house. And it is considered your house you will be responsible for repair and maintenance and it will be in the contract that you are to keep that house as it is you know up to date but even when you rent a house remember it is your responsibility to keep that house well taken care of the yard the trash i mean uh, it, it's amazing but most of all of this are are in normal rental agreements the only difference is it is your house you will be able to paint the walls and do these things but you are required to keep up with the maintenance of the property, the insurance, and the taxes. And I must add that it may seem a lot, but all the appreciation in the equity, all the rent that would have been wasted otherwise, all of that goes towards the owner's equity, the renter's equity, uh, which will be future in future owning that house. So that does not seem like an unattractive proposition. Arjitya. I agree. I agree that um, because you're building equity, you, your rent is being used towards your down payment and you're giving a chance to clean up your credit, this se does seem like a good opportunity. Do you have any other questions? I do not have any other questions right okay. now. Thank you. So, uh, uh, Kelly, uh, I know that we are building some homes in the Washington DC metro area and between Richmond and uh, DC as well. So we are open to rent to own programs for our uh, prospective buyers. But where else these uh, uh, people can go and look for such opportunities and how do they initiate the process? Well, initiating the process is finding uh, the right you know, person that's willing to go into a contract that you can trust and that has integrity is extremely important. 
The second thing is, you know, the new construction houses that uh, that the company has that you were just referring to, you know, they're brand new homes. They come with structural warranties. Almost all the appliances and everything are under warranty. It's, you know, um, the one year, if they're new construction, the one year time frame, you know, uh, there's a punch list and the builder certifies that. So it's a, an amazing opportunity to become a homeowner. And as you know, the first new homes and subdivisions, they're usually, you know, you, you're able to go in and get them in a little bit less because everyone that builds is another comp for the appraiser and different um, options on those houses. So that's a great, but they are out there. You do have to look for those opportunities. And, and as I've said, be careful because there are some bad players in the market. Okay, we have Asif. Asif has a question. Asif, please go ahead and ask your question. Thank you. Appreciate it. This is real nice. Well, I'm trying to just summarize this. Uh, so this will be for people that are on the fringes, like really don't have the credit straight, right? And then just try, trying to build the credit. And uh, so this could be used for uh, uh, a fix and flipper also. Right? It doesn't have to be new construction. First of all, Asif, you'll be surprised. These people are not in fringes. There are hordes of them who are struggling with um, in this kind of situation, especially with Actually, COVID culture. and economic downturn. There's so many of them who would like to get into that. And then the rest of the uh, uh, question, I would uh, uh, request Kelly to address that. Okay, so your question is, uh, I just wanna be clear, on a fix and flip, you're saying that you would buy a property that is in need of renovation, you would uh, fix it up and then do a um, rent to buy option with potential clients? Can you do that? Like, like if uh, it's like if I'm gonna fix and flip a house, and instead of just finding, and if if I want to give, um, hopefully I can find these people and give them opportunity, they could potentially go for that, right? You know that is something that many investors do very successfully. I would say that finding the house that needs to be fixed up and finding there's multiple houses and there's multiple buyers where i would recommend that you would use caution is working with a team that can screen the buyers because if you advertise this house is available for owner financing you know and you go into a rent to buy contract with someone you're going to get so many calls you won't know what to do with them um, as an underwriter i've learned to look at a credit report that looks bad or doesn't have a great score and see why it's a good buyer or not a buyer and i'll just share my secret with you i'm looking for not like isolated credit problems uh, but what i'm looking for is is it a chronic problem have they had lates on their credit report for some reason over the past seven years like they always had something that made them late that's someone that I would say, you know, they're not ready for the rent to buy until they have a really clean 12 to 24 month history and they have extremely clean 12 to 24 month rental history that can be verified. In other words, not just saying, oh, I paid Uncle Joe cash, but here's the canceled check or here's the money coming out of my bank account at the same time. So an expert in the mortgage industry is going to look at that and say, you know what, this is someone where I can see that they have paid their rent. They did have this, they could have had sickness, could have been laid off of COVID, could have had a mother or father that was sick and they, they cut back on their job to take care of their parents. You know, mortgage companies and uh, computer models, they don't care about those things, but we do. We care about what went on. So as an investor that's willing to step into this program, working with a team of professionals that can protect everybody's interest and help guide them through, navigate through those little bit of tricky waters is where I would say you would want to make sure that you put your attention. So so the deposit and, and the payment obviously is gonna to have to be a little bit higher than the, what the rent would be, right? Like, so to cover that part, right? I guess. That, that's a great question because if they're going to be qualifying for a 
a marketable mortgage at the end of the term, the legal guidelines require that you have to determine what the market rent is, and then they pay more than the market rent in order for that marketable mortgage to be able to include that rental excess as down payment. So if they let's say they they you know got a tax refund or something like that, that tax refund is a legitimate uh, source of income that can be sourced and seasoned. And when that happens, then they can take that lump sum, put it into escrow, and that's fine and dandy. They can get their credit cleaned up, or they can get back to work in a job that's paying what they you know if they've got the capital sometimes they don't have the credit because they were laid off or this or that or they, their job has cut them back and they don't they're not debt qualifying for that house so we're looking at you know different factors that would cause someone to want this rent to own program and and but if it's they have great credit and they have great job tenure, they just um, need the capital. Then what happens there is it has to be over marketable rent. So uh, in order for them to go to a mortgage product, but you know there are some programs where our investors want to hold the mortgage. They would rather get you know seven or eight percent on their money than uh, you know, 3% that the banks are offering. So they'll go and they'll just switch it once the people have uh, gotten to the place that they want to go from the rent to buy and exercise that option. The, the owner or the investor says, hey, I'll, I'll be the, the landlord. And then that takes us into, I mean, I'll be your, uh, your bank. And that takes us into another product that is one step above the rent to buy. And we call them land contracts. Land contracts is where the seller already has a loan on the property. They're willing to go into a contract with the buyer. They're willing to go ahead and transfer the ownership. They take care of the financing um, through their own means. And this person actually has a recorded land contract that says their owner right then and there. So that's a step up. And that's immediately becoming, going from a, um, a potential renter which is throwing away your money i mean it's a hundred percent interest when you're renting you're getting absolutely no return so we match investors together sellers together with buyers who we can feel like they're they meet the mark for the rent to buy program Argiria, before you uh, ask your question i wanted to tell asif that now that kelly has given you her secret i have two good news for you number one are you are you in the richmond area I am, yes. Okay. Yeah, Richmond area has a very, very diverse economically as well as uh, ethnically diverse working class. And there's so many people who would be interested in this kind of a program. So if you're interested, then, uh, you know, there's a great opportunity there. The second thing is we have some very good products uh, for uh, construction, for fix and flip loans and those kinds. Of, so if you are interested, you are very welcome to talk with Kelly after the program now Argeria, please go ahead and it was, more of a, it was more of a comment instead of a question sure um as an attorney this isn't a legal advice but in my past experience as an attorney you usually can't use rent to buy as a fix to flip because in the contracts for rent to buy there's usually no assignment of your right to buy so besides a very good real estate broker, you're going to need a good attorney to review the contract to make sure if you do a rent to buy but want to use as a fix to flip, that you're allowed to assign your rights to purchase the property. Because a rent to buy, you're renting in order so you can buy. I think in fix to flip, you're fixing it so you can sell it to someone else. So you have to make sure that contingency is not in your contract, that you cannot sell it to someone else. It's really just for you to buy. Okay, so my, my, yeah, that, that's a very good technical comment. My, uh, you know, addition to that would be that there is a spirit for, for every contract, you know, as long as in, in uh, our system, as long as we disclose properly, we have an intention that is very, very clear. And we give uh, reasonable disclaimers, which are relevant to that. And both uh, parties agree to it. I think we are uh, fairly clear on that. Now, lawyers have to make money, so they make everything very, very complicated. But I appreciate your your uh, 
Yeah, Kelly. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, like I'm confused. I would like to comment so, on that so that I can make sure there is no confusion. When the uh, when our when what I believe Asif was saying is that he's going to acquire the property and then he's going to do a fix and flip. There is no contract involved once the con once the property closes. So a quite you know a, a purchase agreement is only valid from the time that they decide to buy it. So there so I think that I just want to clarify there's two different agreements going on. There's the one for Asif as the investor to purchase the house and he can do anything he wants with it. But once he closes and it goes in his name, there is no contract or assignment or rents or anything like that. Now, what could happen that, you know, triggered me that is if he goes into the property and he gets a loan on the property and he wants to do a land contract agreement and it has assignment or rents, that's okay too because he is assigning that person the opportunity to rent the house out and it's irrelevant at that point. So I just wanted to, to say that purchase agreement contracts in the the at the time of the transfer of the property so i don't think that uh, as a real estate broker that writes contracts reads contracts and for many years i don't think that's applicable at all in this particular scenario all right so this comes to a close so the closing argument is that rent to own is or rent to buy is uh, is also the same thing is a great program for those people who have gone into an un unfortunate economic situation and their banks would not qualify them as a, a person who can purchase a mortgage so they need to look for opportunities they need to engage relevant uh, professionals realtors mortgage people uh, attorneys whichever the case may be every case is a uh, different individual and it may require uh, you know different set of uh, conditions or or terms so be careful not to uh, become a victim of any scam do due diligence is for both buyers as well as sellers but nonetheless it's a great opportunity and i hope you find this information useful we are always available if you have any questions if you need any help for all the this offer is for real estate professionals whether mortgage people title or uh, realtors, investors, fix and flip people, or home buyers and sellers. We're always available. You're welcome to uh, communicate with us for any question. And I thank you very much once again for joining us. Keep watching, keep looking for our future uh, announcements so uh, we can share more uh, information. and. Um,